So in the past section, we plotted the graph of y equals x squared minus 6x plus 2. And we found that this is a u-shaped curve called a parabola. And this parabola had a low point, which we called the vertex, at 3, negative 7. So this vertex could also be a high point, as we'll learn later. But the vertical line through this vertex is called the axis of symmetry. And if you hold the graph paper along this line, like, or fold the graph paper along that line, and like, um, put them together, we're going to find that the two parts of the graph fit on top of each other. What this means is that all the y values repeat themselves on either side of this axis of symmetry. So in this section, we're going to put the graph into a form known as vertex form and learn how to graph it quickly based on that information. So first, just a little background info on completing the square. So you guys should remember from past years that if you have the binomial x minus 5 squared, in order to square that out, you first square the first term, so it's going to be x squared. Then you're going to multiply the two terms together, then double it. So this would be negative 5x, then doubled would be negative 10x, so minus 10x. And then we just square the second term, so negative 5 squared is positive 25. Whoops. Um, so, let's suppose like, we want to find the constant term to add to an expression, such as, so let's say we have x squared plus 7x, and we want to figure out what this constant term needs to be in order to make the expression the square of a binomial. So, if we're going to reverse the operations we did here, basically the term has to be half the coefficient of x. So, half the coefficient of x here would just be 3.5, so we would be getting x plus 3.5 squared. So then squaring it out, we're going to get x squared plus and then 3.5x times 2 is 7x, that's where that comes from. And then this constant term at the end is just going to be the square of the 3.5, which is 12.25. So these two are equal to each other. So basically, completing the square means that if the coefficient of the quadratic term equals 1, such as, let's say we have the form x squared plus bx, then the number that completes the square is found by taking half the linear coefficient b and squaring it. So the result means that if we want to complete the square, it's going to be x squared plus bx plus b divided by 2, because we're dividing it in half, and then squaring that result. So now we're going to want to complete the square for y equals x squared minus 6x plus 2. So the first thing we're going to want to do is subtract 2 from both sides, so that y minus 2 equals x squared minus 6x. Now we need to complete the square on uh, this side of the equation in order to get it into a squared binomial form. So to do that, we're going to take the b term, which is negative 6, then divide by 2 and square that. And so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to get a positive 9 on this side. But in order to do that, we need to add 9 to this side as well to make the equation 2. So we'll have y minus 2 plus 9 equals x squared minus 6x plus 9. Then simplifying this, we're going to have y plus 7 equals, and then we want to get this into the factored form, which here would just be x minus 3 squared. So now we have this in the form known as vertex form. And basically, in vertex form, uh, we're going to note here that the vertex is going to be 3, negative 7. Basically, the x-coordinate of the vertex is going to be uh, the x minus whatever term it is here, and the y term of, of the vertex is going to be the whatever y minus is right here. And the reason that this is negative 7 is because we have y plus 7, so negative 7 is what's going to make that 0, whereas positive 3 will make this 0. So basically, in order to get the vertex form of a quadratic function is going to be y minus k equals a times x minus h squared. 
where a, h, and k are constants, and the vertex is going to be at the point h, k. So we have the quadratic function y equals negative 3x squared minus 24x plus 11. And we're going to want to transform this to vertex form, then find the vertex along with two other points, and then finally graph it. So first thing we've got to do is transform it to vertex form. So to do that, remember you have to subtract 11 from both sides first because we want all the x terms by themselves. So we'll have y minus 11 equals negative 3x squared minus 24x. The next thing we have to do is remember in order to complete the square we need the x term to have a coefficient of 1 so we need to factor out a negative 3 here. So y minus 11 is going to equal negative 3 times then x squared plus 8x. Now we can complete the square. So completing the square, we need to divide the b term by 2 and then uh, uh, square that. So here would be dividing by 2, we get 4, and then squaring is 16. So we're going to have y minus 11 plus whatever we do to complete the square equals negative 3 times x squared plus 8x, and then we're going to add 16. But we're adding 16 within here, but really to this equation, we're adding negative 3 times 16. So we need to compensate um, on this side and add negative 3 times 16. So we're going to add negative 3 times 16 here. So simplifying this now, we have y minus 59 equals negative 3 times x plus 4 squared. So now that we've got it in vertex form, we know that the vertex is going to be at the point negative 4, 59. So now we just need to find two other points. Um, one point that's easy is the y-intercept. Um, and the way we can do that is just by setting x equal to 0. So that means that if we set x equal to 0, y equals 11. So the y-intercept is going to be the point uh, 0, 11. Now a third point, we just really need to substitute in a value for x. So let's keep it simple and just substitute 1 for x. So that means we'll get y equals negative 3 minus 24 plus 11. So then y equals negative 16. So that means the third point that we found here is the point 1, negative 16. So now using that information to graph it, we know that the vertex was at negative 4, uh, 59. So we can graph that point right now. It's going to be about here. And we know that the y-intercept was at 0, 11. So now we know that this is, this is what's called the axis of symmetry, right? And we know that there is symmetry across this vertical line. So that means if there's a point here at 0, 11, there's going to be another point equal distance uh, away from the axis of symmetry. So about here. So at this point, we can just sketch the graph, and we know it's going to be an upside-down parabola that looks something like this. Whoops, that's not good. Um, about, uh, that'll work. So remember the original equation was y equals negative 3x squared um, minus 24x plus 11. So a couple things that you should notice is that this parabola is facing downward. So this and this is what happens when the x coefficient is negative. If it were positive, then it would be facing upward. 